Hey, Psych2Goers. When exactly does sadness become depression? Because these two words are often used interchangeably, some people get confused about their distinction. Saying you're depressed is different from saying you have depression because the latter is referring to a mental illness, not an emotion. When you're feeling down or have been feeling down for a long time, you might wonder which one you're experiencing. Depression is usually more severe in terms of its duration and the extent of how it affects your life, whereas sadness is normal and may take less time to recover from. With that said, there are some differences between normal sadness and clinical depression, and we're going to talk about seven of them now. Number one, you're still able to enjoy the simple things. Do you still find yourself laughing while watching your favorite show? If you still have the energy to enjoy your hobbies, you're most likely going through normal sadness not clinical depression. People diagnosed with depression often find themselves with an overwhelming feeling of lethargy and may have no interest in doing things that once brought them happiness. This numbness can extend for long periods, which is different from normal sadness. Number two, you have enough energy to complete your daily tasks. Are you still eating all of your meals? Do you have any difficulty sleeping? Depression often comes with an inability to complete regular activities because you lack the energy and don't see the purpose while you're unhappy. Even simple things like going to the bathroom can seem tiring to you. Depressed people often stay in their beds, losing track of time with a feeling of numbness. A sad person may be more silent and inactive than usual, but once the needs arise, they eat, use the bathroom and take care of themselves. Number three, you still talk to your friends and loved ones. Do you open up to your friends or rant or cry about what's been going on? People with depression may be unable to perform these acts as depression can stem from nothing at all. A person may live a completely normal life and suddenly find themselves experiencing sudden feelings of numbness and hopelessness. Because of that, some people choose not to open up at all, which may prevent them from reaching out for help because they may feel that they're not worth the effort. This is different from normal sadness because you still welcome your relationships. When you're sad, you may want to take a break and isolate yourself for a little while, but eventually you usually get back to socializing. Number four, your self-esteem is not permanently affected. It's normal for sad people to have negative feelings about themselves and the things that are troubling them. Emotions such as remorse, regret, and hopelessness are common when you've experienced an unfortunate event, but they tend to fade over time especially when you know the root of the problem and are working on it. This differs from depressed people who are caught in a continuous loop of negativity, which can extend to thoughts and acts of self-harm or even suicide. Being able to recover from a bad experience is a good indicator of your mental health. If you know someone who harbors continuous negative thoughts, you can help them by letting them know that you're available to help. They may not want to talk just yet, but your presence is just as important. Number five, you're experiencing burnout. Do you find that being with your friends no longer makes you happy as it used to? Even though nothing's changed, or maybe you find it difficult to maintain the routine you've created for yourself through weeks, months, or years. Everybody needs a timeout. Otherwise, they're at risk of burnout, which is characterized by feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion caused by prolonged stress and can be mistaken for depression. With burnout, you may find yourself unable to complete your tasks due to increased mental distance from them or no energy because you're unable to cope with the stress you've been enduring for a long time. If you can relate, it might be a good idea to practice a good work-life balance. Try to give time to every aspect of your life to avoid burnout. You can schedule activities such as taking an overnight trip with your friends, going on a blind date, or even going to that dancing class you've been eyeing. Keep active and explore many things to avoid stagnation. And if that doesn't work after some time, a visit to a therapist or doctor might help. Number six, you feel better after letting it out. Do you feel lighter after a good cry? Feeling better after letting your emotions out is a good indicator that you're sad, not depressed. Because clinically depressed people often don't see the point in opening up about what they're experiencing and tend to see themselves as worthless and undeserving of attention. Because of this, their relationships, friendships, and careers could be at risk. According to Talklet, talking about your feelings is important because it helps you process your emotions, develop emotional awareness, and clear your mind. So it's better to let your emotions out than to keep them in. 
That's why it's really helpful to be surrounded by trustworthy and understanding friends. And number seven, time heals you. After a few weeks or even months, do you still find yourself experiencing the same situation or are you slowly forgetting about it? Being able to bounce back is an indicator that what you were experiencing is normal sadness, not depression. Depression is much more severe in terms of the extent of the symptoms and of how these symptoms impair the person's life. And doctors will look for symptoms that last at least two weeks as possible signs of depression. It can last for months or years and is more difficult to recover from than normal sadness. So whenever you're sad, take your time to acknowledge your sadness, try to find healthy coping mechanisms, and surround yourself with loving and supportive friends and family. Can you relate to any of these points? Please share your replies in the comments below. As always, the references and studies used are in the description. Until next time, friends, take care, and thanks for watching.